Hello guys, it's King Ghost from the Wampus Armory here and today I got my hands on some extra ages arm part. This is kind of weird, it's uh, I, I get a lot of prototype and I am not really a gothic German kind of style kind of guy. However, when I saw these in this basement, I just went and be like, I want those. So I'm going to grab In any case, so now the whole box of them so, and they, I don't really have a suit of them, but they look so freaking cool, look at them. So these are the late medieval, early renaissance I guess, uh, 15th century German fluted arms, very iconic, we all know what German arms look like, and the cool thing is that he also has one of these sitting in his basement, it is a German salad, it's extremely light, very very comfy, and this thing lift up, it comes with a little brown plate that you can, I'm still trying to fix up, this is actually a, a prototype one, and I already love it, it's absolutely perfect, it comes with a little lock, comes with a little Lobster tail, love it. And then it gets back to the arms. So this set of arms do come with a matching and it does come with a matching bellow salad. These are going to be late 15th century kind of sets so you can actually can get either this bell salad or you can also get the other salad as well and of course what this transition into well here's a little prototype secret that you may or may not seen from namely the metatron channel one second and yes that's absolutely my favorite helmet um and of course, as you can guess it, this is actually the Maximilian helmet. There we go. It looks absolutely stunning. I love this thing so much. It's absolutely adorable. So, in any case, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's, it's Dane uh, from Asia's Armory getting into a whole bunch of gothic stuff. Well, he's, he's actually always into these kind of gothic kind of things and he loves it. It's just that we um, he's been trying to develop a really good gothic set which of course is, has been made already many people have been requesting it and this is pretty much the streamline from the prototype to mark 1, mark 2, mark 3, mark 4 and he even developed three different helmets to the point where you know what even his arm system looks absolutely fantastic so in this arm system what happens is that you're gonna get either this amazing beautiful set with absolutely fantastic articulation on the pauldrons Look at that. When I, you know it's a good pauldron when you rise your hand up and it's and look at that. The pauldron stays very, very close to the human body. Many times what you're gonna see is that if this lane is too stiff, it doesn't move too well, the whole thing just kinda rises up like that and it expose your elbow, expose your armpit and you get stabbed and I guess you die. So meaning that having this little bit of articulation here, it's absolutely important. So look at that, look at how clean that is, and if you look at all the little detail on it, it has all the cute little bells and whistles that you expect from a German armor. This pretty much rival the one that you see in Maximilian in the very early century before he got into that Maximilian set. This is absolutely fantastic, this is what you see in what a Duke and Earl is going to wear, it's so good. And of course we all know Asia's pricing, they are like really really affordable they're like entry level pricing for high grade armor there's a reason why i only buy stuff because they're just so good so here's a sneak peek and look at this guy this is a secondary upgraded version of this first pauldron this is i find this to be more like a cavalry kind of use we're gonna see that of course while there is the well the lens protection thing that goes on the side like look at that difference oh we instantly know which one is the nicer one. Like this is so, so sexy. Holy crap, look at that. Oh, I love this thing so much. I wish I, uh, I wish I have a German set so I can buy these off of him, but I can't because I have no German set. In any case, but we can change that. But you know, Dana, stop tempting me with things. I just want to buy everything that you have. Like I only have 12 of your helmet, guys. In any case, so, in this version right here, it is a stainless steel set. So if you look at the inside, look at that. These are all real hammer marks. Someone actually took a hammer and then go pam 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 every single one of these flutings. So they're like so well made. In any case, so on all these fluting, uh, it's 
well, it's uh, there's no leather strapping, so this thing is absolutely solid. Uh, I haven't fought in this yet, obviously, because it's not mine, so I really don't want to wreck it. But in any case, there's no weird black paint on the inside. It's very clean. There's no oil. So then, the difference of these stainless steel is that you notice that they're extra high polish compared to mild steel. These are mirror polish as well. It's just that maybe because there's a film on it and uh, inside there's a bit of blackening, so maybe they just look kind of dull compared to these ones. Alrighty, so first of all, setup you're gonna have is that from these stainless steel polishing compared to the mild steel is that they're gonna be on rivet uh, leather tab, which could be fixed. You can take it off. Put two holes in it too, you can point to the jacket, up to you. But these are, uh, for now, meant to be tied to a gorget that also has a little tab coming off. And the articulation is, is decent, it's not bad, it will take a bit of getting used to. They are, well I mean if you're fighting in this and jousting, you don't really raise your hand up too much. I don't know if you joust in this, I don't know what jousting armor is like really. I only fight in foot combat. So, in any case, articulation is decent. And beautiful big Batman wings, like, oh my god. And the arms. Absolutely fantastic. They move really well. I do wish that they do go in a little bit more. So, but for a pair of these, once you get a hand on this, tinkering on these is very, very simple. Take off the rivet, put on a leather strap, you're good to go. And of course, it comes with the bottom strap as well, so that it stays nice and tight on your arms. And so let me grab the other one. All right. And as we all know, in every single Aegis armory and every other armory you get, they always come in massive bubble wrap. But, take it off, all good. Uh, I smoke with that bag. Okay, so, first and foremost, that this is what the other one looks like. It is, it's just an identical one. Um, I just realized I wore mine backwards, so we're gonna have the front, look at how much detailing there is in the front, it is so nice! Like. The Smith drill hole and like sand every single one of them with a file, that's like nasty work. That's like so, so much work to do, but you know, it's lo I love it. Entry price for high grade stuff is fantastic. So that's the front part, so you see a nice little beautiful decoration and the back part is significantly bigger because, well, I guess you don't want to get stabbed in the back. And also, what happens, I actually like how in the back because what happens when you, imagine that's a back plate, when you raise your hand up, if this is too small, it's gonna get caught into your breastplate and kind of get really weird. So I do like how the back plate is a little bit more longer. So then when you raise it up, it still stays within your breastplate. When you put it back down, it just stays relatively nice. And these guys right here, they are on the top section. It's a uh, sorry, and the inside is all blackened with paint, so they don't rust because you know people sweat. And so on the inside here is you're gonna see. These are all going to be riveted from the, top, from the front and the back and there's no middle center strips. Not needed because you get really good mobility. Look at how butter smooth this is. So nice. In any case, so that's the back side, that's the front. And then inside there is internal leather strap. This internal leather strap is only mostly used for the big pauldron piece to the, uh, to the arm lames and they consist of four lames. With the leather strapping, very classic, nothing fancy. I'm sure if you want to take off these riveted right here, these these rivet, you can turn it into a leather strap. It's up to your preference. I it didn't bother me. I've been wearing this for a while now and it's comfy. I have to say, this is a really light, super mega light arm. Like I most of my arms are actually very heavy, and this is already kind of oversized on me. They could be even tighter and fitter and better, but I have no issue with this at all. Because I'm not fighting with the pauldron. This little part right here at the top. One thing is that these are very pointy because they're really, really well made. So if you actually jam your hand to it, be careful. They are kind of pointy. <laughs> but hey, Germans, you gotta have the pointy points. So next, I'm actually wearing mine a little lower. It should be a little higher, but uh, I'll fix that later on. So next part, we have the pauldron. Great, starting off, we have gonna have a hidden uh, rear brace. I actually didn't wear my rear brace because I have short potato arms. For someone who are long, longer, taller, bigger statue, whatever, if you have longer arms and you realize that you want that extra defense, it comes with a rear brace. And... They look like that. It's a, a cute, a very, very cute little uh, half plate. You don't need a lot of defense. You are just trying to protect yourself from the outside. So, technically from the pauldrons, you can then add on this rear brace before it gets into your cooter. 
You're gonna notice that it is just a half plate with beautiful fluting and it's asymmetrical. So then, obviously it's asymmetrical from outside inside. That's not the point here. The point is that, if you look at that, there is already a cutout for your, the bending of your elbow. So if, you, if I had it here, like that, it allows that bending movement to happen. So, that's one part. It, this is so crazy, like for armor this light, and to be protective, it's absolutely fantastic. I think there's like, what, 16 gauge? It looks 14 actually, but definitely not 18. Like this is definitely for fighting, not for LARP. Like you can wear for LARP, it's so light. But then, I would happily take a steel sword to this and I'll still be okay. Moving on. We're gonna have, and then we're gonna have the cooter piece, which I already strapped the other, uh, this is the, actually the other Bessie Goo. Uh, sorry, uh, rear brace. So this goes on this side. Come on. Like that. So then, if for uh, example, my rear brace is here, and I have my cooter, they actually already have these little convenient pointing holes on there, so then they sit nice and tight. Look at, look at that. Mobility. Oh, perfect. It doesn't hinder at all. Now for some people, you may want to redo a bit of holes yourself, drill more holes, depending how you're how you like the configuration of your armor. I find that even out of the box, these are fantastic. I haven't had any issue with these yet. Well, I haven't fought them yet, but I have been doing a lot of videos of these and they're just like fun to just wear. This, this arm has been on my jacket for like a good eight months now and I just like put it on and play around with it. This is fantastic. Anyways, and you know what's crazy? After playing over so long, I haven't cleaned it once. It's set in my basement and no rust because of high, high polishing. High polishing makes it, it's almost rust proof. But don't, don't count that. Please take care of your armor. In any case, so the cooter is going to be a very classic, not a complete coverage because you don't really need that, but you have all the protection that you need from the front. Um, that's the front, and then of course the side is absolutely massive. This is like so big, it's like those 15th century Italian stuff. This is massive. Like I am very, very happy with these, and they're so light. They're big elbows because, well, people like the nightly big elbows because they look like heroes and I, I, I'm a sucker for that. I love that shit. In any case, not like the English. <laughs> In any case, so we are going to have extra fluting. There's so much fluting going on and these are real fluting. They're like, look at the inside. These are all real fluting and they're done by hand. It's... How did they get it so cheap? I don't know. Okay, moving on. And then the next piece of course, we have the rear brace. Of course, this is the same rear brace that I have on the inside. This is just the left side. I absolutely love it how they look so clean. So the, sorry, van brace, not rear brace. Rear brace the one on top, van brace the one on the bottom. Brace. In any case, I love these one, how they are on a center pin. And you, if you look at it, you see the silhouette of the arm forming. Like it dips in and then it's a bigger forearm. It is so nice. I do think they are a little bit bigger than what historically uh van braces for but i think it's because in the context that these are more or less meant for uh fighting more than reenactment so then we do have heavier jacket and of course from the other ages armory brand especially the half plate armor that came out and that was like a, a peace god of the uh 16th century and they have a burgundy overlay i am thinking that ages armory their brand is going towards adding armor pieces on HEMA gear, which is great. So guys, we don't have to buy extra doublet anymore. I freaking love it. Like I put this on into my fencing jacket and it fit so well. Well, I guess maybe I'm tiny. I, I don't know. I think I'm pretty average in size. If you know me and you see me in tournaments and you have fought me, you know I'm a, yeah, I'm pretty small potato, Never mind. In any case, so <laughs> moving on forward is, yes, they are, they carry the silhouette of the human body and they're not just a straight tube. They do flare in before they flare back out. Now, they are a little bit big on me, but I guess it's good because you buy more metal. So then if you need, you can actually trim them down. Like you can trim it however down you want. They're relatively plain on the half, lower half area just because your gauntlet is gonna be covering it. Oh, that's the fun part. I, I do have the gauntlet too. They're so nice. Any case, and these guys just pop out just like that. So they pop right in, so then there's a little tab right here, you slide it in, put it in, and then boop, there you go. Now let's just say, whoa, that looks a little dangerous. Does it actually like 
Is this safe? What if it pops up when I'm fighting and all that? Well, here's the thing. What happened is that I do have another prototype set from Dana. Uh, Dana is the guy who owns Asia's Armory. So if I do, it's not easy to arm yourself, huh? Come on, fabric. I got too much fabric here. I, after having this jacket for like four years, I still have not tailored. Okay. Alright, so, even after I put it on, the pointing hole, the, the only criticism I guess I have to say is that the pointing holes for these is like slightly in the back, whereas on the cooter, it's actually on the side. So I do wish that um, these are actually on the side instead. That's the only criticism that I have. It's like, you just drill a hole, you'll be done. It's like super fast. But in any case, these goes on super easy. So, getting back to the point is that what if your van braids just popped out in the middle of a match, what do you do? Well, I assume you have a gauntlet on in a HEMA setting tournament or Harnish Fakten because if you don't have a gauntlet on in Harnish Fakten, I guess either the match is about to be over or you're not in the match. Then in that case, I think you'll be fine. And let's say, what if your gauntlet fell off? What are you doing that made your gauntlet fell off? I guess you're grappling at that point, but I guess this is about to be end anyway. So, and... Look at these bad boys. Oh, they're so nice. They're so nice. Holy shit. When I first saw this, I picked them up and I didn't know how oily they were. Armor is supposed to be oily, so it's okay. But it's just, holy shit. I, I want a pair. I seriously want a pair. Now, for those who have the first couple of prototypes from Asia's Armory, and uh, how nice their gothic gauntlets are. One thing that I have to say, they're gothic. I usually never really like their um, the fitting of many, many gauntlets. But when I first saw these, I was like, oh my god, they're so nice. So I'm having trouble putting these on because my jacket's actually way too long. If not, because the fabric's pushing. In any case, so, so look at that. <laughs> so good. The articulation is so you guys, like for gauntlets, you will not get a circuit this nice. It is beautiful. So we're gonna see that and in, um, in, in the part that is not fluted on the van brace, it doesn't matter anyways because it's covered by the gauntlet. And let's say if it does pop out, so I'm gonna pop this out now, is that it doesn't matter. Your gauntlet is gonna be keeping this nice and shut. You are gonna have a gap. If you do pop it out, my gap is only about like an inch. So if, even with pop on my battle, you're fine. You're still fighting. You're still doing your job. You're still okay. So I don't think it's an issue. <sighs> I love these so much. Ah, God. Okay. So now I guess now that we're in the gauntlet, into the gauntlet. So in the gauntlet wise, we're gonna see that they are gonna be consisting of the beautiful, highly, super gothic, massive knuckle blade. I feel like. I feel like if I punch someone with this, I can do a good damage. Like, oh, this is like a flange mace on a hand. Ha <laughs> ha, so nice. Love it. Okay, so we're gonna have that. We're gonna have a beautiful, good articulation on the back. Yes, you can still go forward and backward. Mainly because, I'm, hold on, I'm gonna hold the cuff down. So if you, if I, if you do that, like it still move. Here, let me be fair. There is still movement here. There's some, but most of the movement actually comes from how wide the flaring is. So meaning that if you were to do any arming stuff, you should be relatively fine. Pole axe, armor, dagger fighting, you're fine. And I know Dana personally, of course, because I, I guess I'm his main student now. I don't know. Haha, <laughs> Dawson, I'm taking your spot. In any case, um, I, I'm one of, his long, one of his longest students, I guess. I don't know, maybe I, I hope to be. In any case, so what happens is that Dana always advocate for having good hand protection and we try not to use finger hand protection unless it's a very well controlled spar drilling demonstration because Dana, the owner of Asia's Armour, cares for safety a lot, safety above all else and it has to be safe and it has to look right and function right. So this is historically accurate in a way that it's more a little bit safe for in our everyday modern context. He does make light stuff as well, but he always says just use the heaviest stuff for now unless you get hard in play or you can go stainless. But he cares for safety is what I'm trying to say. Meaning that even these finger gauntlet, I had a student using his finger gauntlet fighting in Longsword, fighting in 
sword and buckler and we also did some spear work, we're fine. But then again, our club is also pretty safe. Now, if you fence our club, we are not that slow. And we're not that... I mean, we're not aggressive, but we're by all means. We do hit with intent and purposes, not to harm, but to score a point. And we do hit it historically accurately. So it means that we do sometimes hit a bit hard. Sorry. Then again, so these finger guns are amazing. So what, one thing is that these are dome fingered that actually wraps around the down the side pretty well. So when you're holding a weapon, more or less the transfer of the weight, if you do get hit on your hand, because if you're holding any other object here, the weight will get transferred onto the shaft of the weapon and away from your finger. Do I still advocate that you can use finger gauntlet for uh, for longsword tournament fighting? Probably not, because longsword tournament fighting just scares me in general. I'm a pansy in the club, so sorry. But in any case, these are very safe. They move so well, and they are. There's some weight to it, just because finger gauntlet always have more weight than the other. But overall, I still feel safe, very safe this is with this, these ones. And you can get absolutely every single one of these parts in stainless steel. And of course, maybe, maybe, eventually, Dana might actually design one that matches this nice fluting set right here. I don't know. Uh, this is the, one of the first, uh, first arm harness that he, um, he has in his inventory, and these set are currently for sale. I um, I had the luxury of snatching these from him in his basement and kept it for a few months now because I, uh, I said I was going to do a video, and uh, I guess I finally did a video after uh, eight months. Sorry, Dana, I had this for too long. Sorry. Any case, so in the entire arm harness, look at that. Look how nice that is. Oh. You I love it how every, even though if I move every single one of these parts, except that part, but then again, you're not gonna run around with your, name, uh, with your opponent like that. Um, every part that I put on, they are so very well defensive. Like, they're so good. Oh, I feel like a superhero. I, I just want these parts so much. Oh, look at that. So, in any case, so in summary is that if you guys are looking for a really nice gothic set uh, that is in the late 15th century, I highly recommend asking Dana or Aegis Armory, same thing, for a pair. And these are ready to be ordered. They are, there is this one in stock. There's also other ones in stock too, because he has a lot of carpet box in his basement and I want to know what they are. But in any case, that's not the point here. But the point is that if you want to start yourself a good German set and you don't know what to look out for, I seriously recommend Head up Asia's Armory because you might get to yourself some really sweet stuff for a fraction of the price that other people pay for. For the price that he's selling right now, I have been doing a lot of market research in terms of what things are out there and things are out there is much more expensive than what Asia's is selling and they look absolutely crap. Like they, yeah, it's just, guys, I have to say, Getting an off-the-shelf armor piece is not easy already. Getting a functional off-the-shelf armor piece is even more harder. And then the next thing is that getting yourself a nice off-your-shelf functional armor piece that looks historically accurate and it works really well and it works for whatever goal you have. It is tremendously crazy unheard of. And for arm like this, easily it can go into the thousands, but you can get one of these in front in Asia's armory. Once for a much lower cost. Once again, these are not cheap, of course. They're not like just tin can metal. These are real hard work done by a smith. But for the price that he's offering, these are absolutely fantastic. So, that's just a quick little review. I mean, quick little review, that's been 20 minutes already. Uh, this has been a quick little review from uh, well, myself, King Glitz from the One Parts Armory, and I just want to show off his new Gothic armor. Well, maybe there's more parts coming in, maybe there's well, maybe I'll smash some more things in this basement, but I have to tell you, as a sneak peek, yes, he does have more German helmet coming in place. And aside from the German helmet, of course, as one more time, we have, we have the really cool salad with the lobster tail. And look at that, that, that just matched so well. We have the foot combat uh, one, and he also has a closed helmet version. What a closed helmet version, it means that it actually comes with 
the, the Bever visor piece that you have that protects the lower part and your neck part and it is integrated in the helmet so it makes it much more safer. Uh, I think that's a more later kind of late 16th, sorry, late 15th century, early 16th century kind of style. Whereas in the 15th century, they still have two pieces, a bever and a salad. But this is so light, it's crazy. I'm not sure if this is meant for Hema, but if you put this over a fencing mask, you'll be fine. Next, and of course, we have the very first set, uh, first set of the German helmet which is the Bellow Salad. That's one of my absolute favorite helmets. I, I've always liked the Bellow Salad. And I got the Bellow Salad and I didn't know why. And, uh, can I open this? It's stuck. Oh, the latch is stuck there. There you go. And aside from the Bellow Salad, the reason why I like this is because of the Maximilian helmet. In, uh, mine is just mild steel, something fancy. I might get a stainless one eventually. I love this always so much. And it's because the Maximilian helmet has an absolute beautiful armet helmet and it is so nice. Like imagine that arm with that helmet. Oh look at oh look at how nice that is. So nice. So nice. Well, in any case. So yeah, enough showing off. If you ever want to fancy yourself in the German armor, want to get into what a good German armor is like, or just wanting to play around with it and see what it's like, if you ever do get to come uh, join us in Hylian Hema, which is our Hema group, or if you ever get uh, to pick, to touch one of these because your friends so happen to have Asia's armor, I highly recommend getting yourself a pair, at least try it out. All right, well, signing up for now. This, this, King Blister from the One Press Armory. If you have any questions, drop me a comment, DM me. I don't know how else you'll find me, but I'm pretty easy to find. All right, see ya.